This is The Relevant Show with me, Josh Averton, Andy Sincox, Alan Smith and Craig Wood. The normal four is back and I've got a background. I've seen the feedback. I've seen the comments. We've taken it on board. I've got a background. No, no I'm not having that. Play the British way. Is, Whoa, you, you've, not, you've, not taken, you've not taken the comments on board. You've been shamed into no, it. No, no, no. This he's is the background. Sh- he's on this about is the background I was having leads. Yeah, can I say leads something? Leads he's, he's, a big, well, he's a big Formula One fan. It's like, it's like a flag for Formula One, See, that. They've got me Lewis Hamilton Monster as well. No. Tell him, Al. It's, it's so, yeah. not, I've, I've listened to feedback. He's been That's, shamed it is. into it. It's not. I've, I've, seen, I've, I've seen the comments. Tell him, Al. Don't let him get up. Chris, no, I want to be read all we, over next year. We no? react. No, you're making us look bad here because we react to feedback. We take it on board and then we act on it. And you're Alan, just making it sound like we Do you think like he's reacted to feedback, or do you think he's been shamed? Be careful what you say, Al, because I can I, see a shame going there. I think he's shaming me. I think he's been shamed. Mm, Craig, well, do you think he's been shamed, or do you think he's reacted well to feedback? I think he's reacted well to feedback. So that's oh. the best answer there. That's Craig. That, that's Craig on next week's show. I don't know about you two. We'll see about that. Do you so, yes, I've got a background, which is the main news of this show, quite frankly. We're going to speak about yesterday's Carabao Cup win over Wigan. 4-2 win on penalties after a 1-1 draw in normal time. Two new signings, none of them are strikers, but two new signings, new goalkeeper through the door and a new midfielder as well. And then we're going to preview Lincoln on Saturday. So let's get stuck into it. So, Andy, looking back at last night's game, um, one of those games, obviously, when you look at the lineup as well, um, a fairly rotated side, uh, a couple of players getting sort of the first minutes of the season, Donovan Pines coming back in after that long-term injury into a little bit more competitive game um, from the 21s, perhaps. Um, obviously, new keeper gets a start. We've got Jürgen Afen in midfield as well. Phillips, Connell rested. Um, a little bit of rotation up front as well with Marsh coming in. Disjoint in the first half, but fairly solid in the second half. I think you called it. I think it's exactly right. I felt I, I, I felt for young Vimmel because it was a bit of a rash challenge, but he's young and he'll learn from that. Um, again, the thing that were laying us down with the flipping finishing, we had a numerous numerous chances to get it in the net and it, it was a nice little pass back to the goalkeeper. Or I think, I don't know if it's at home or away, somebody's putting too much air in the ball because it keeps going up at bar. I just I just think, I think somebody's pumping it up to far, Al. So... That apart, I thought, particularly the second half, most of the first half, but I thought we played all right. The second half, they didn't get much of a look in at all, Wigan. Um, I think we pushed them back. I saw at the end, the stats were we had 52% to their 48% of uh, of position, uh, p- uh, possession, a bit like Brexit, really. And it was nowhere near. We, we had a lot, lot more possession than they did. And I thought, so, so second half, we were really good, but we just couldn't finish it off. But the play were, you know, the play were good, and it might, you know, go against the grain a bit, like. But when he came, I thought Max Watters played well. It's just, it's just not looking like a goal scorer, and I don't know what it is. We were worried when he were taking his penalty, and then we said, you know, we'll never, you know, we'll never go against him again because he slotted a beautiful penalty. Say, same, same. same. We Russell thought, oh God, no. And he slotted a great penalty. The one that did a shocking penalty. I don't know if he was trying to be clever by just dinking it towards goalkeeper, expecting to die for Luca. That was rubbish. But yet again, big Donny, big Donny's there. He's got, when when he's fully fit, and I, I don't know how far he is. He played an hour or fifty-five minutes or an hour um, last night. For me, for me, I would be starting him. And if he can't last the full match, if he starts game. Then take you because he's <clears throat> just just imagine, just imagine we get a long throw whether it's from Big Bazza if Bazza's playing and we have Roberts, Donny and Cosgrove Teddy you know to to get in the box attack the ball even if it's without Mark Roberts and he's taking along and Big Donny is going to get his head on it rather than we had all last season where we had long throw-ins and we just waited for them to Eddie clear Donny attacks it so he's got to be on that pitch. And it'll, it'll make a big difference to us, I, I think. But, I think you could um, add Josh it, Erling to that as well in terms of mix. I think he's 6-3, six, 6-4. <laughs> six, he had a good head result in the first half. Yeah. Um, as Andy's alluded there, Max Watters had an opportunity to win it um, towards the end. But it is, it's almost a, li- a little bit weird. Run of. Obviously, against Mansfield, he was 
it was effective in what he did. He just missing. It's almost like he's just missing that confidence. I think once he gets that first goal, it doesn't matter how it goes in necessarily. Um, it could it could be a bit of a revelation, but it does feel like time is sort of running out a little bit for him now. It is. Uh, I, I was surprised last night when he drove forward when he took players on. He had a what about a ten yard drive, didn't he? Mm. Uh, and I, I thought, wow, where's where's that come from? And um, he, he should have finished it off before penalties. Yeah, not on target. Snatched at it yet again. Um, and Barry Cotter, Cotter, Cotter should have ended up uh, making it safe. And that went over crossbar from what six six yards out. So we got chances. We, we you know, as I said, clinical finishing yet again. Took it to penalties. I must admit, uh, as Neil uh, keeper Gab uh, ended up with that save uh, when Earl lost it. And they drove forward and they outnumbered us. What a what a shot stopper he was to, to save that one. Uh and then two penalty saves. What can you say? Uh, brill, brilliant, brilliant. What, what a debut uh for his first game in a red shirt. And Luke has missed two penalties now, so it's not going to be a regular penalty taker, is he? But it's a good second half performance when subs came on when uh, uh he, he, he changed it and we got uh, Lofthouse on. Uh, we got Phillips on and we got Captain Connell on. Uh, but I don't think they were in it much second half. They had a few chances, but I think they're on back foot. But 1 1 penalties, we got his first victory. But really, it's a draw and a, a loss, isn't it? Really, yeah, it's almost a little bit hard to read into these games, isn't it? At the start, that, the start of the season, Craig, especially like first game is always. I mean, you look at last season, one seven nil. Um, and at the time, I said it weren't convincing at all, even though it was such a huge margin in which we had won by. Um, <laughs> and then you look at this season, sort of fairly all right against Mansfield, and then you can never tell anything from this first from this first um, Carabao Cup game because most sides are heavily rotated, and it's going to take a few weeks for everyone to work everything out. So it is a little bit of. There's still teething issues insides at this point in the season. Yeah, I think I think it's clear we're we we we're light and that's up front. I think I think we've been fairly dominant in both games. I think the first game, I thought soon after the first twenty five minutes, I thought we completely dominated that game. And if we'd have had better movement up front, uh, better finishing, um, not trying to walk in so much, I think we probably could have won that game nine times out of ten. And uh, against Wigan, I think, yeah, again, as soon as we saw Connell and Phillips come on, I, I can't remember them having a decent decent chance or a decent bit of possession. We completely dominated yet again. And it's, I really want to like what us, I really do, because I think, I think the work rate is there, you know. Um, but he just fumbles the bag so much in front of goal, it's unreal, you know. Um, it, it, what he needs to do, he just needs to learn to put it in one at corners at, uh, at net because he either it's straight at keeper or completely fluffs his lines. And uh, the, I reckon there's going to be a decent striker in there, but he needs to work on it. Um, it I don't I don't know what it is, whether it's nerves, whether it's just having a monkey on his back, he's trying to get off. Um, you know, f- fans, as soon as he gets on a ball, start grimacing when he, when he doesn't do what they want him to do. You know, um, but... It, uh, we need strikers through the door because Cosgrove, there's been a lot of people saying, oh, he's going to bag 20 this season. Um, I th- I think there's goals in him, um, but he needs help. And I don't think Waters is the answer. I think he's a decent backup, but I don't think he's a starter for us. Um, we've just signed another midfielder that is going to be a creative spark. That will help. You know, um, uh, it was part of the um, Arsenal um, that you set up, and there's a he's uh, he's had a, he's had a quite a very career for such a young age, and I think he's gonna have a lot of quality to offer, um, which also then brings into doubt whether Yoga Nathan's gonna get any time uh, to flourish or whether he should go out alone because after pre season, I'll be honest, I wanted to see a bit more of Yoga Nathan. I know he made a he made a bad mistake against Wigan, and that was just youth and. You know, too much enthusiasm and it costs a it, it getaway penalty. But I think there's a real player in there, just like I do with Jallo, you know. Um, but signing players like the guy who just signed is only going to take minutes away from him. So is it is it best to just send him out loan to League Two, maybe National League, give him a full season in a proper men's league? 
you know, that might be what, what, what we're going to look at. Um, obviously, we keep hearing Darren Clark saying that we're, uh, that there's, we're getting close to players and everything. Um, we just got to see what's happening, whether it's going to be loans, whether it's going to be permanents. I think Gargas Lenina coming in. I know everybody calls his new real name Gabriel before X, but everybody calls him Gargas Lenina. Um, I think it's a fantastic uh, grab. Because we saw Killip in that last game and he got... I don't think he's he's good enough at this level. He's a decent backup, but I don't think he's a starter. I think we saw that when Roberts were out last year. You know, Killip, he was a decent backup, but I don't think he's ready for first-team football. And I think he's going to be the game-changer at the back. Um, I think he's a really young, enthusiastic goalkeeper. I think he's the young, uh, US men's national team's uh, youngest ever player. You know, uh, I think he's, I think his first appearance when he was seventeen, so I think that tells you a lot about him. Um, obviously, Chelsea's bought him, along with the other fifteen hundred thousand young <laughs> players that they've signed. Um, so he must have a bit of potential about him. Um, he went in the he played Dutch football last year. I think he had a bit of a hard time starting that. With his interview, he said he, he took him a bit of time to bed in. But I think having the likes of Pines in in the squad and. Um, everybody being around his age as well, I think he'll fit in a lot faster in uh, staying in England as well. So things are things thing like I say a draw and a loss. People will be going, oh, that's it. Uh, <clears throat> Gabriel Soto right saying seventeenth finish and all this, but there's a lot of positives to draw from it. There's just one big negative, and that is up front. We need to do something uh, about up front because we're not gonna we're not gonna get in near, uh, near enough goals. Um, I just want to mention one more thing. I know I'm banging on, but um, I want to see more of Lofthouse. I want to see him on the right hand side, not the left. I think that this kid could be better than O'Keefe. I think he could be our starting right back because I think he's got all the skill of Cotter, but all the consistent. But I think he, I think he's better than him from what I've seen. All the skill of Cotter. I don't think we're there that very often. But um, but uh, but I, expecting that. I, 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 no, I, I, no, I mean, I mean, <laughs> but by that I mean, he's he's got the he's got the the skill to take somebody on, the confidence to do it. But I think he's got more control over it than Cotter. He's been outstanding, Craig. Yeah, has, yeah, he, has, he, yeah. has he got the shoulders back though to sprint? <coughs> has he? Baz gets his chest up and runs. Baz runs out. I can't, Baz, Baz I can't believe when he did that blistering run. That run. I mean, he run me in a full length of pitch <laughs> yesterday. And then he crossed it into nobody. Nobody were there. He didn't even look up. <laughs> and then he threw his arms there. up in there. And then he threw his arms up in there. And then he threw his arms up in there. And then he threw his arms up in there. And then he threw his arms up They know he's going to put it to it, box. They should be saying, put it to him. They weren't even in box. Well, they should have been. It's their own fault. They should get yeah. the sense it box. They know what Barry's going to do. He's going to go down there. Right. And it's either going to be a cross or it's going to come behind goal. But get your sense there. Don't just. Rely it's on not, somebody else. It's not for his good players. Hey, I hey, was it's running like, and it's running. Like OJ with me and Andy, Bob Earnshaw. Uh, yeah. Bob no Earnshaw. idea, Rabdi Al. Hey, they had not seen no like it ever. Bob Man, Earnshaw could dribble around eight head. a dozen players and then run out of pitch. It were a, a joy to be old. It's just anyway. I was I was glad to see him on set pieces yesterday. Big buzz. The, he had screamers. It wasn't a bad free kick, to be fair. That's all. That's all I want to see. If he puts one <laughs> them in top stanchion, then I'm happy. It's happy. How can, how can he shoot from there and, and, and miss from six yards? Come on! He's <laughs> a set, 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 set piece, Connell and set piece specialist. And we got a free kick at end, and Barry was stood there and said, "Can I take it? Can I take it?" And they were like, "No, Barry." Yeah, Good on him at all. Get in there, Buzz. <laughs> That's what I want to see. <laughs> he just kept um, off me around free kick spot. It was just a little, it was just funny. So as Craig's mentioned there, Andy, obviously a couple of um, new signings that we've um, brought in. We brought in Gabriel Salanina um, from Chelsea. So looking at quick stats, back, so he's going for a season-long loan. Obviously goalkeeper, played 86 times, conceded 140, 24 clean sheets, played 7,740 minutes. Um, and obviously arrives on loan and made an Im immediate impact yesterday, as we've already alluded to, of the save in which he made in the first half and also saving two penalties in the shootout as well. So, Andy, it's not necessarily... It's a little bit weird on this season because we've obviously brought in Jackson Smith 
who assigned a five-year deal, well, four plus one. Um, and it's sort of been no secret as well. They've been looking for an extra, another keeper to come in um, to sort of be the first choice and and the starting keeper um, that's come in. So, but it does feel like there's a little more emphasis and there'd be more of a need to bring a striker at that time. Although now we've got him, now we've got sort of that number one in and we've, we've seen what he's capable of yesterday. Um, it's almost like we've built a little, we've upgraded that back line a little bit more now. Of There's a little bit less pressure on scoring because if we score one, we might actually go and win now as opposed to last season when we had to score a win and a two a game. It, it feels like it. When we signed Jackson Smith, I thought he were being signed as the number one goalkeeper. That's what I thought. Um, having seen him play, it's not as tall as I would I would like a goalkeeper to be. But you know, it's, it's, it was all right. But I think I think the length of the contract and his age shows what I didn't consider really that he's one. He really is one for the future. Mm -hmm. So I suspect that he will go out on loan somewhere. Um, and and if he does, good luck to him. If he don't, he don't. Um, but Gaga coming in, he's still only young. You know? I mean, I thought, when I were on the show, I thought if we were going to start saying Gaga, it would be Alan I were talking about, not a goalkeeper for Barnsley. I didn't expect to be saying anything other than Alan's a bit Gaga, but I don't have to, because I've said it now. But he's only young, so he's still going to have a, lot, a fair bit to learn. But he proved, he showed last night that he's 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 got something, hasn't he? Chelsea... Chelsea do buy goalkeepers like most people buy pints of milk in the morning or whatever, but they spent a lot of money on him. So as you've said, as you've said, there's a lot of potential there, and he showed it last night. He Phil, I can only say we only watched it on 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 Sky Sports Plus. We can honestly say for me, it filled me. Oh dear me! Oh no. It's it's like shades of Joe. Al. <laughs> things for, I tried like, to defend like you, Josh. I tried. Don't worry, I'll fix it. It's like I'll Theresa it. May, isn't it? Things falling down behind him when he's talking. You can't That's... get the staff, can you? Hey, blue at... tack, bloody blue tack. Oh, oh Alan, get, oh, get... Stu the students are the life of jobs. Have you see my background fall down? Oh, well. no. I'm gonna start calling him Theresa. Professionalism, you amateur, Josh. It's, it's Have you just blue tack that up? Sellotape. <laughs> Theresa May, Al, that's all I'm saying. Theresa May. He filled me with good football. He, he filled me with confidence last night, which I don't often say about goal. He, he got the height, he got the ball, and he looked decent. <clears throat> when we went into the penalty shootout, we know all about, from last season, what Sam Tickle can do. He really is Mr Tickle. With hand. He's, uh, oh, well, he saved everything that came near him. In fact, he saved things that didn't come near him. He was that good. So when it comes to penalties, I was thinking, oh, I don't know about this. Don't know about Gaga. Don't know anything about him much apart from what we've read and what have you. But he looked all right during the game. Um, <clears> and I thought Tickle, he'll, he could save everything. Basically, and he didn't. And Gaga, he, play, he played played really well. Played well in the match, but he played really well for penalties. Um, and for that. And, and his reaction, you know, as a young lad that's got giddy. You know, he made a save and you know, he's just joined, but he's still giddy because he wants to do well. And even when uh... he, even when he missed, though, even when he didn't save one, <coughs> he, he, he was furious. We said, we, "I like to see that passion." It's good to see. It's, it, uh, that's the word I'm looking for, Craig. It, it is passion. So it, it was really good to see. So I hope I, I actually ex got high hopes for him. I hope they don't get dashed. That's that's the only thing. But I, I don't think they will. I think we've got a good goalkeeper that at his age will make a few mistakes. He's forced to do because he's young, he hasn't got the experience. And I think most of us wanted an experienced goalkeeper to st you know, steady the ship and what have you. Um, but we've gone this way and we've got what I think is a really top-class, or will become a top-class goalkeeper. Um, but he's showing that he's got it. He's got it now. Mm. So for that, I'm really good. It's just as we've all said, and I think we've said for... Well, not not just during the summer. We need a striker. Hmm. We need a striker in January. We need a striker now, at least one, probably two. I think. I think now, probably. Yeah, two. I think that sort of. I think it's very obvious now where we need to <laughs> improve. Al, um, in terms of obviously bringing in the key, uh, bringing in Selena, it's very. It's it's all well and good in terms of bringing someone of his sort of quality to elevate 
um, everything. But again, it's only a season long loan, and then it's going to be sort of we're going to have to reassess then next summer of sort of seeing where Jackson Smith's at, and then it's like, do we need to do we need to then go and sign another keeper again? It's not papering over cl- cracks necessarily because if if he comes in and takes it next level, then get then we get promoted, then we are going to have to go back to the drawing board anyway. But it's almost like there's two ways of looking at it, of we either commit to Jackson Smith, give him the season and accept he's going to make mistakes or bring someone in that's, we're only going to be a temporarily, but can do, yeah, well, we're hoping he's going to do a better job than what Jackson Smith could do. It is, isn't it? It's goalkeeping merry-go-round, isn't it? And looking at squad number, they've got uh, uh, Gabriel Slonini, uh, number one shirt. So that number were, were free. So mm-hmm. he's got number one, anti. So what's that tell you? Uh, and other signing, what we've got, as I say, he's. I think we've given him a three-year contract, haven't we? Uh, is it Kletchy? No, we'll get on to that in a sec, Al, don't worry. We'll, we'll get on to that one. So, yeah. Keep practicing, Al. I'm, I'm pleased we've got a keeper, and uh, he, he looked the business, and I thought it was a great first debut for him. Uh, he did everything right, as I say. He couldn't, couldn't save the penalty in normal time, but he made up for it uh, at uh, penalty shootout. So uh, let's see. Uh, well, we, we're recording this now and uh, let's see who we get in round two. Mm, certainly, certainly. So as you mentioned there, Al, um, obviously we have a, another sign as well. <laughs> Midfielder Kalechi and, and Wakali. Um, so sits in midfield, seems more of a holding midfielder given that he's played 201 games, scored 14, 15 assists. And something I like to see, 35 bookings. He's got more bookings than he's got combined goals or assists. So he's straight up my street, straight off the bat. Um, and he also won the Golden Ball for Player of the Tournament in 2015 Under-17's World Cup. He's playing for Nigeria. So, Craig, not necess- it looks like he's going to bring a different dynamic to what we've got already. So it doesn't really seem like a direct replacement to sort of open up the floodgates of like, well, that's Phillips going because, is I mean, you look at them stats, so you're not expecting someone that's going to sit in behind a striker and be sort of the creative spark that's going to get you 10, 15 a season behind your strikers. It looks like it's more someone that's going to disrupt play um, and sort of sit a little bit further back and create from there. Uh, yeah, I think I think even... Um... Craig is going to rotate, I think, because there's going to be a hell of a lot of matches this season, you know, with cup competitions, league competitions. Um, I think he's going to be a direct replacement. I think Connell and Phillips are going to be the guys that go forward, including Johnny Russell, who's actually looked a lot better in what I've seen so far this season. Um, so I think I think, I think think them two are going to interchange, and I think them three are going to interchange a lot. Um, so it's a welcome addition. Don't get me wrong, but like I said, I do I do think that he's pushing the likes of Yoga Nathan out on loan. Um but he looks an handy player from what I've seen. He likes he likes to do a long a long race past a, a, a marauding wing back. Um he seems to he seems to like get get a tackle in, um seems combative. I don't think he's he's gonna take long to get into the um mix of everything. He's 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 had a lot of appearances already. Like I say, he's twenty twenty six year old, so he's not a young kid, and he's not a young kid. It's uh, he's um, he's actually quite quite tall, I think. So um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pleased with the guy, you know. Um, him and him and Craig rotating because I think I think Craig's probably going to get a fair few um, bookings and might have to sit a few suspensions out. So it's nice to have a like for like. Um, guy in there to come in, and we know we know that's not going to really mess with the rhythm of the team, or we're not. We're going to have to downgrade, you know, from Craig to some to a youth prospect or something, and not know what to expect. So yeah, look, more bodies in the better, but we just need them in striking areas now. Yeah, it's a little bit of a of a weird one because um, as Craig sort of mentioned a little bit earlier, it does push the likes of. Yogan A from like a little bit further down the pecking order. It's like almost another midfielder on top of signing Connor, um, Craig, and then now um and and Kuali as well. It's sort of we've brought three in to replace we've only lost Herbie Kane from that position, if I'm remember correctly there. We've only lost one midfielder. Ben, so. Benson's injury as well, if you want to factor Yeah, that. true, true. Um so it does it does provide a little bit more cover, but the other side you look at it is it's just more depth. There's just you can rotate then and be a little bit more selective in terms of whoever you come up against, you can have a certain midfield. 
Also, you Styles, know, I think, might be leaving as well. So, yeah, we know we we, we can't keep. We, we know where we need to strengthen, but one thing that there is, if this if this player is what we think he is, then it pushes other people. The worst thing sometimes for players is to think all I've got to do is turn up and I'm picked. So, if it pushes somebody to say, if you, if if you're on a player, you're gonna to, got to play at your best then that's what we need. So in that respect, I think it's, a, as far as I can see, a, a good move because it keeps other people on the toes as well as him on his toes. Competition for places brings out better. And if people can't take that competition for places, good, don't play because you need that competition for places in professional football. What we do need, though, is somebody to have competition for places up front now. We can't, we don't, we don't need, in my view, any more midfield players. We are missing out on a player that needs to go at people, get the ball out and go at people. But when he's back, we've got Fabio that will do that. But we, we do need that. We've got Barry and all. We've got Keir, Kyron, who's been doing that. Mm. He's been going at him, whether he's playing on, he's been playing on left. But he's like a new sign, whether he's on left or on right. He, he's, he's looked tremendous. So he can go at people. But we do need... I'm going to use Alan's thing, the fox in the box bit. We're going to need somebody that can get it five yards out, ten yards out, and hit the target and get it, get it in. Because we need a different clock, don't we, Andy? We do, Al. We're creating... We need know, a different box. I wish I'd kept a, t a tally. We're creating the last two the two matches we've played. We've created loads of chances and um, not taking them. And it's not just one player. You know, It's a number of players. So it makes you think, that is it about snatching? Is it about... Whitley, no, I've got to score. Go, oh, that, whatever. Relax. Don't lean back for one thing. Don't lean back. Because if you lean back when you shoot, it's up there somewhere. Um, lean forward when you're shooting. Lean forward. Head over the ball all the time, yeah. Andy. Head over the ball. ball. Lean forward and smack it. Don't tickle it. It's it's a football. It needs kicking, not tickling. Oh, so lean forward and smack it. You don't need that. You just need perfect placement like Luca on, uh, yeah. on Friday. Well, he's, he's we need a bagsman. Oh. That's what we, we need. Somebody that bags goals. We just need that Luca finish from Friday. Lean forward. Get up ball. That's mine. Lean forward, Al, and lash it. Don't tickle it. It's a football. Lace it's, it, it's not lace fluffy. It, it. Laces. Put your laces through laces it. Took Casey, Andy, Adam, Adam, Adam Phillips. Adam, Adam Phillips is the guy. There's but nothing. He, he absolutely more. lashes it, does Phillips. He puts his foot right through it. Yeah, it's what I like no. to see. That's There's it. nothing I love more than people that watch the game telling people that play how to do it. <laughs> There's nothing I love more than that. <laughs> Isn't that what we all just sit here and do? Yeah. Well, you three do. I'm just here to facilitate conversation. <laughs> that I guy like who to, plays I professional don't... football, I don't think he plays particularly well. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I can't run 10 yards. Yeah. He says he's had 35 bookings. He's my type of player. Yes. He might all be for telling referee off. For swearing at ref. Well, that's all right with me. At least he's yeah. trying to get something done. And, and, and he's come from La Liga as well. I, 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 I've heard. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, let's yeah. go. I'm over there. So it's a good, it looks like a decent signing to add a bit of depth. Yeah. Um, right. Looking forward to Lincoln. But before that, there is something we've not addressed so far. It might be Alan Smith's shirt. Now, if you watch his game, as a program, sorry, over the summer, about a month ago, we did a we did an episode looking at the new kits which had come out because we got the red one, we got the whitey grey one, silver one, and we got the pink one. Now I remember there was someone on this show that said, "I am." Well, not... me, I didn't do that show. No, don't worry, Craig. Don't worry. I am not buying a shirt this season, and I'm pretty sure it's a bloke that sat in one of this season's shirts. Oh, which oh, is my the camera pink is one. that way. Well, all I'm going no, to point say of away, of away, of away. Hold on, I've been shamed by Tom. I read all over post on Twitter. <laughs> laughing. Okay, now I've got to see Al Smith, tight mad, in a full pink kit away. No, nobody cancer, needs that. For breast cancer awareness. I'm and sorry, then, but that does specify full kit. Does that then mean then you've got shorts <laughs> and socks? And I replied to Tom. I said, unfortunately, they don't do one in my, my size. But Tom says, he searched no. it and says, oh, they do, well. Proof of the pudding. Proof of the pudding. And it's for a special cause. It yeah, is. But have you got the shorts and the socks too? Because it's, it's a full kit. Mm. I want to see the full pink. You weren't buying any shirt at all, Josh. 
Yeah, no shirt at all. Yes. And it it definitely, weren't. definitely not that pink shirt. Definitely, mm. even if I, I'm not buying any, but I'm definitely not <laughs> buying that one. Not that one. Your wife will let you anyway. It sounds on it, Andy. Nah, look. <laughs> yeah. look, can nah, I say look. something? The shirt's got the same trim as a red all over mug. No, oh, there we go. Let's show so you. Only you know that, Al. That I will means tell you this. That I'll means we're pioneers. My grandkids, well, I better keep my voice down because one of them doesn't know because he's just come back from holiday. He'll not watch this. Nora and Jack have got the home Barnsley kits. And I'll tell you what, on them, when you see them there, I don't know, thing of beauty. The shirt's excellent. Even with the darker right. trim to go with shorts, it, it's a th it's so much better than last season's kit. I'll if anyone that. wants to look at Andy's I, real reaction to it, go back and watch the episode about a month ago when he, were, he weren't saying any of this. I'm, I'm buying the whole I'm buying shirt. I'm buying one when they come out. I'm buying it. Size, right, which is a big if. Apparently, end of month. End of month. outsized. Yeah. yeah. But we're getting them. I, I need I need it. I like it. You know, well, as, pink shirt. As, yes. They've, so they've speak... done the other two in the big sizes. They just haven't done the old one yet. So well, speaking, I don't like the other two. speaking of the pink shirt and the away day, so there is um, a reason behind that. So on the 5th of October, when we're away at Huddersfield Town, um, a few fans, I think it's Ryan Garner um, on Twitter. It might have been someone called Tommy as well. I can't exactly remember um, who it was, but someone just came up with the idea of let's wear let's wear the pink um, when we play Huddersfield away. Um, and it's getting a little bit of traction now online. It's something that we'll obviously want to to, to get behind as well. So pink away day, um, Huddersfield Town versus Barnsley, 5th of October. You don't have to buy the season's pink shirt. Just wear anything pink. It's for Breast Cancer um, UK. There's a couple of little things going on. So if you contact Michael Sykes on Facebook, um, you can win all three Barnsley shirts. £10 per bonus ball. So there's a, a, a raffle going off for all them shirts as well. Um, so yeah, it's something that, it's been fan driven at the minute um, to get to, to get behind that. There is a just giving page as well, which I will stick in the description below. If anyone wants to go um, and donate down there, please get please please um, get to, to get behind that as well. Um, and if you search it on X, we've retweeted it um, on there as well. So you go into our socials, you'll be able to find all the details on it there. So yeah, just something to get to, to get behind Reds, and also I will be there at the John Smiths full shirt, shin pads, boots. The works, you know, Captain's armband. He'll have everything on for you as well. So if anyone wants to go one one step further, I don't know what even would be. I don't know what else is going to be. I don't know else you're wearing a lot. So can anybody that stands near him have a red card and go like that? Be a red card. No, it's got to be pink, Andy. That's true. Pink foot day. Pink foot day. So yeah, make sure that's something you get you get involved in reds if you can. So right, look, look. I think he should get his hair dyed pink as well. Yeah, that would really add to it, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can I tell very... you a story about that? Too when much. we went to Wembley in two thousand, they were all spraying their hair. I've got a. They did. They, they were white, so they all started spraying hair in red. That bit at front went pink. Oh, huh. so we know what to do then. Red, red spray paint, and it'll turn out pink. Cheers for that insight there, Al. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're going to regret that when it comes to that Saturday. Um, so, yes, looking forward then to Saturday as we face Lincoln City away. So, manager Michael Scabala still in charge. Top goal scorer O'Connor, centre-half on two, bag two against Burton. Sat third in the league, obviously beat Burton 3-2. Form is a loss and a win so far this season. Won on Saturday, lost last night 2-1 to Harrogate Town. Formation, variation of a 3-5-2, 3-4-1-2. It's very fluid in terms of the way in which they're playing. Obviously, key stats is a loss last night 2-1 to League 2, Harrogate Town. But as I mentioned, there's only so much you can read into them games just because of heavily rotated sides. Andy, I know that you've just done the away end and I know exactly what I'm going to mention do. it. No, well, I've got a far getting there before you. So you've done the away end, but that means you're going to tell us nothing about what you've learned from the away end because you're going to have to go and watch it to find out um, all the inside information. But sort of from your um, discussion with Jake, how do you feel about this one? Because obviously Lincoln last season, come, come the end of the season, a very, very strong side and obviously whacked us at home um, towards the back end of the season as well. Well, a couple of teasers for you. It's last, last night, don't read much into last night, there were eight changes last night for them. Um, and they started pulling it back when they brought three, three on. So it's it's a bit like us really, and, and presumably like Wigan and maybe others. You know, you play, 
give fringe players if you want to cut. I, I, I'm also a bit iffy. Squad players, I'm not a bit sure about fringe players. That sounds a bit um, disingenuous, really. Squad players. So they did that. Um, what he has told me, which uh, is, I, I think is, is, is possibly interesting, is that from the summer, he listed how many players had left and how many had come in. Um, they've lost something like eight or nine or ten players lost, you know, left or sold. Um, and they brought in about ten players in. So I asked him about, um, you know, so you know, about about gelling, cause it, and he feels that although it's only been the uh, the two games, certainly the first game, he felt that they dominated the game that they won at Burton. Um, so he's not too worried about about the gelling. What he's hoping this what he's hoping this week, because the one of the players that they lost who was on loan was uh, Joe Taylor, who caused us problems at Oakwell when they um, the beat us, and he mentioned that. Um, not that surprising to everybody. Um, he's hoping and expecting that um, he'll re-sign for him maybe this week, um, maybe not. Uh, but other other people are uh, are after him, including Huddersfield. I don't know if we are or not. But he'd be a player that if we want me to score goals, we should be looking at him. But if he re-signs and they've got Ben House and what have you, they've got some good players. You know, they're not they've, they've kept the spine. They've changed the goalkeeper. Uh, you know, the goalkeeper. Sold the goal because uh, I can't remember which team it was. He sold uh, Millwall, I think. Um, so they've, they've sold somebody to this field as well, but he, he feels they've kept the spine. So they've kept Adam Jackson and uh, O'Connor, the centre half, who you rightly say scored a couple of goals last week. Um, and Erehan, I can not pronounce his name like Ethan, mm -hmm. that the, the we had for a <laughs> short while. <laughs> Ethan. It's his first name. Yep. Uh, it's his first name, Josh. Ethan Erahan. 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 Not Hurahan. I'm going to call him Hurahan. <laughs> We're in our reserves too, see. Ethan Hurahan. That'll just confu it'll confuse. Mm. Bro it'll confuse all Lincoln fans. So, Ethan Hurahan. Um, and, you know, a, a, a few of the players that have that, that they've kept. He's, he was disappointed that, I can't remember his flipping name now, the, the right back who, I'm going to say Thomason, but it's not Thomason. Lasse right Sorensen. Sorensen, that's it, Tim. They've lost him. Um, which is a good thing, but he thinks that they've got somebody else that will uh, fill his boots well. So he's feeling quite positive about it. But you know, what does what does he know? You know, he talks. Yeah, that is true. Because I'm looking at the stats from that Burton game, and Burton had four more shots, <laughs> two more on target, two thirds of possession, double the amount of passes Lincoln had, better pass accuracy, um, less yellow cards. I mean, they're same amount of corners, so. Stats-wise, it doesn't look like Lincoln dominated that game. It looks like Burton dominated it. Well, it probably lies as probably lies just as much as I do. So, and that's that's not a good look for him, you know, because he's <laughs> it's a national treasure, isn't he? He's on winnappers on on there, what's it? And um, he's uh, you know, it, it does the whatever it is, the football league thing mm -hmm. for all all three divisions now. So, so, because other teams have left our division up and down. Um, so he's putting his set, he's putting his set about. He was going to be on Gabe Sutton's show while we're doing this, but Gabe's gone ill. So, oh, you know, he's, he's Gabe. well, you know, <laughs> okay. I think Gabe, Gabe, does he? I'm just asking, does he make a few people sick? I don't know, make me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll see him. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to be an inter it's going to be an interesting game. I did, I didn't, I, I didn't ask him in truth. I didn't ask him for a prediction because I didn't want him to embarrass himself because mm, I know he'll go for a home sense. win. So I, I, you know, I, I think enough of him not to um, not to upset him too much. I did, did talk he... to him a bit about his, uh, his 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 status as a as a as, as a bloke, and shamed him shamed him a little bit. So that's worth watching because he went well. They were expecting it. He didn't know what which way it were going to come, but he had a bit. He had a bit, and he loves it. He loves did it. he uh, mention anything about Tom Bailey? Because Tom Bailey signed yeah. from Shrewsbury two assists. Yeah. He said he, he looked pretty good. Hmm. No, you know, just, he had to was... watch it. He, talk, hmm. he waxed lyrical. He waxed lyrical as, as he does. Oh, there whether you go. It's, whether it's all true or whether it's just, you know, bias, who, who knows? There's know. your weekly away and plug, courtesy of Worth Andy watching Dincox. when it's up. Worth watching. Yep. <laughs> Certainly is. I'll, obviously, Lincoln, tricky side for us to come up against. Um, and as Andy's mentioned there, a couple of changes this season, but kept sort of the the, the nucleus as what, of what uh, made them successful last season. And also Burton this season uh, seemed like a side that 
are not going to be an easy game compared to, to compared to last season necessarily. They're going to be a much more difficult opponent. So to come through that three two is probably a decent yardstick for Lincoln so far. It is what we've got to be aware of, though. It's same as last season when we were two one up and they come back to equalise to make it two two at uh, Cincinnati Bank, won't it? Uh, and looking at the two games they've had already, uh, it were two apiece going up against Burton, and then they got a late goal on eighty six minutes. And then again on uh, last night against uh, Arrogate, they were two 0 down, but they got a penalty on eighty five. So we've got to, you know, be honest to us, on his guard. We've got to be at it for ninety ninety two minutes. We can't switch off because Lincoln City and a never say die team, and that's I think that's their strength, that's their credit. Mm. Uh, and as I say, it's something we've got to be aware of. It's not an easy place to go to. And uh, it's going to be uh, in memory again of Anton, Anton, yeah. uh, who, Roberts. Anton yeah. Roberts, who sadly lost his life uh, at the end of uh, a game, a uh, midweek game, uh, a couple of seasons ago. So uh, it's a game for Anton. So uh, we're thinking about all the family. Yes, yeah, certainly, c- yeah. certainly are. Um, Jake, Jake has said that he's going to be looking out for you, Alan, on Saturday, just so he can hide out it where when he sees you. He won't miss him if he's got that shirt on. He can't miss me. He won't miss him. His, he says he's going to do his best to, though. It, unless he's wearing sunglasses, that's fine. Mm, that is true. He'll be one with his head right corner, looking right corner. You'll just see the one eye going right corner, Al. Craig, obviously, Lincoln, a difficult side. But then again, I think we've got a lot of unknown quantities now. I think when it came to especially the back end of the season when we really started to struggle. It was almost, um, we played Lincoln right in the middle of that um, when we got battered 5-1, I think it finished, or 4-1, 5-1, one, I think it was. Um, it, like, they played us almost at the perfect time for them. They, they were up here and we were on his way down there. And we've got a little bit more of an unknown this season because we've got a bit of a new back line coming in. We've got new keeper, we've got Roberts, um, and then we've got the midfield that looks a little bit different. Clark's a different entity again. So there's a lot more guessing involved for Lincoln this time rather than sort of the clear-cut nature of last time round. Yeah, um, I think Lincoln are a really good side. I don't think they're as strong as they were last year. Like you said, that we've listed um, a lot of players that have left, but there's also Dan uh, Daniel uh, Mandrio, yeah. who they had. Well, uh, he's gone. Um, he left as a free agent. I think he's. I think he's still a free agent. Um, and a lot, a lot of things have, cha- have changed for them. They're, I think they're still going to play the same same style of football. I think they're still going to be pressing, but I think they're going to have a gelling in period that might take a while. Uh, I think Tom Bayless is a really good pickup for him. Um, but I think in midfield we are stronger than we were last season, which we were strong last season, but. I think we've got a manager as well. I mean, last season we were sitting ducks. Let's let's not you know split hairs about this. If we were getting beat, we were nailed on to get beat heavily because we were unwilling to change anything. The manager wouldn't change formation. All he'd do is the same uh, regimented substitutions every game that every manager could plan for because he did the same every game. Clark is a different entity. We saw after the first game, if some if if we're not playing the way that he's happy with, he will change it. And he will drag somebody off in 30 minutes into that game and he'll just have to take the fallout of that after the game. And I think that's going to be a real game changer for us. In a lot of these games, we are, I think we probably will get out-pressed because I don't, I don't think we're good at pressing at the minute. I've seen us play Wigan and I've seen us uh, play first game of the season. I don't think our press is there yet. I don't think it's, I think it's slow. It's ponderous at the minute. Um, and they're going to they're, they're be at home as well. But I think with the changes to both teams, I think we're, we're just as strong. I think they're weaker. Um, and I think that's where the biggest differences are going to come. It's just the same old thing. Can we score? Because if we can score... Then I, I I think with the defense we've got, with the goalkeeper we've got, I think we can keep them out. Um, a lot of a lot of issues last season come from set pieces. With the size of the players we've got in the squad, that shouldn't be an issue this season. The set pieces are now are going to turn from a weakness to a massive strength, 
especially if Pines is starting. We've already seen him against Wigan. You know, you got likes of Josh Earl, Cosgrove, you know, the big players, really big players that are that are that are really physical, you know. Um so much so that Dejivine is actually the one who stays back now. Because everybody else is like, move out of the way, we've got this. So um yeah, it's gonna be an interesting game. It's gonna it's gonna see a lot about what progression we've made. Also whether they whether they've um declined in the um in the with with the with the squad changes. Um and but like I say, it'll all come down to can we score? Because at the minute we're struggling to get anything through to our strikers that they can feed off because I uh, you know, insert reason here. But I think set pieces could be key for us in this game. You know, I know Paddy O'Connor scored a couple of goals from set pieces for them, but I think I think we'll just be dominant at set pieces. I think for me, it depends on how we how we set up the game. We we know that Scabala sets his sides up to press high and to get at people, which is exactly what Mansfield did. If we start like we started against Mansfield, then they'll do the same again. They could easily go two goals in front if we approach the game like that. If we don't, if we get on the front foot, then it could be a right contest. And, you know, anything could happen, but we can't afford to start slow for the second time. But the chance that we've created in two games, we've got yeah. more clinical. And hopefully on Saturday <laughs> we can put that uh, put that put that right. I put a tweet out after the first game of the season and I said I wanted us to ditch this uh, five at the back because I think we should play similar to what Luton did a couple of years ago. A diamond formation in midfield. I think we've got the bodies to do it. I think we've got the depth to do it. Um, and I think the owners want us to play this pressing football. I think that the current formation is too defensive to be able to efficient at pressing, you know, because it means that a midfield that a defender is going to have to come out a centre back to press a midfielder, you know. So you match up numbers wise, and obviously we see Dejuvene doing that. He did against Bolton last year. You know, he has to step up out, out of the defensive line to close down one of their uh, either wingers or or attacking midfielders. I I I just I want to see us try something different because I've seen this formation now for for two seasons. And I think as a top as a as a club that's looking to get promoted, we need to be allowed to be more fluid. I think a I lot think of shown that he is. I, yeah, I think yeah, so oh, far yeah. He's shown that he is. Yeah, but he had to change formation to a four at the back to get that response. That's okay. what I'm saying. But that's but the, other thing, the other thing as well last night is MDG and Earl both got caught out on halfway line when they were pushing higher up. Yeah, exactly. Then that, we, that's then the then issue. Back foot, so, you know, it, 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 <laughs> it's, it's going to be tough because they do tend to push up high and they dwell on ball and, and, and lose it. And, and Lincoln, if we do that, they're going to uh, really uh, be better uh, and they'll end up creating more chances. Formations, yeah, you, you formations soft, can differ according to games. I, I, I mm. don't mind four four two. I don't mind four at the back with a diamond. I, 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 don't, I don't mind the formation that we've got. I don't mind that either. I've been um, I've been What I don't as a like is footer. one up front on their own. That I don't yeah. like. That's the only thing I don't like. One player up front on his own because you can't press with one player. And I, yeah. I, I like to see pressing. Oh, we do that. I, I don't know. I like well, that's four, what four, I mean. Two, if you, if you've got a diamond, you still have the two strikers. Your outside yeah. midfielders would be Connell, who's got the legs to cover the outside space, and Phillips, who can cover the but outside then, space. But then, if you've got Phillips in an advanced position, you've only got one defensive, one midfield player behind this. I know there's one directly behind the strikers, but one further back. So whichever whichever formation you use, whatever, whatever you, there are vulner, there are pluses. Yeah, yeah, there will be yeah. vulnerabilities. Whatever yeah. you do, we um, need a Billy what, Ronson in that centre circle, holding midfield, well, Andy. Well, what I do like, what I do like, but like I just think our, our our defenders are, are good enough to only need four of them. I don't think. I mean, it, it, see, I disagree I mean, with five, that five, because I think if you play five at the back, you've only got three defenders realistically. Yeah. The idea of five at the back is that your wing backs aren't really defenders necessarily. No. When you look back at the Val season, like Callum Stale spent three quarters of the game in their box. Same with Callum Britton. Yeah, but yeah, but the difference is the difference is as soon as we got the ball. Under Val, as wing backs were gone, 
They will. That's, oh, that's, the, no, that's that's the. It's that's too the, slow and ponderous the problem at the minute. Had. But then, but then when we had Michael Duff, we had the same thing. Of the wing backs were really high up. Like, look at how many assists Jordan Williams got in that season. You look how. Um, creative Cadden was on the other side. That's been his problem of last season. Cadden and um, whoever played in the right, O'Keefe, whatever, they just got isolated because the midfield didn't quite want to help them. The same, the exact same thing happened in the first 25 minutes of that game against Mansfield. Every time George Jenk got the ball on that side, O'Keefe got on that side, there was no one running the channels in front of him, which is what we got with Val, of having that three up front. You could have Chaplin out one side, Vic on the other, DK in the middle, and they go run the channels and give you that option to knock a line ball in, and you could also go in the middle to Mowit, whereas now we've not got that at all, and it's a case of George Jenk goes out there, he's got full-back marking, well, he's got their wing-back marking him because they played five as well at the back. They've got wing-back marking him, centre-half comes across as well, and also midfielder in the centre. Someone's spare. Someone's spare, but there weren't. no one was showing for the ball in that first 25 minutes. And so, we've got to tighten up, haven't we, lads? Uh, both wing-backs in both games. Yeah, I think Easy what we need to do is just shove them. To get back to byline and get balls across. I think that's the problem, is they're not high enough up the pitch at the minute, and it's yes. going to be a teething process completely. You've got, far too deep. If you've got less bodies in the offensive third, then you need to push the line up to, to, to reduce the space that they have. Because if there's less space, then it's less you've got to run to the next player, so to speak, to keep the press. So that's why you've got to get that back line forward. But the issue, the real issue against Mansfield was, is we weren't playing, we, we were playing with uh, Craig as a sitter. And um, Johnny Russell were also, he were kind of doing a little bit of both. But Phillips was pushed so far up that when they broke the first line of press. We had three players up the top of the pitch that weren't able to defend at all, which then left Craig and Russell weren't able then to um, go out and defend the wide areas because they were so worried about the numbers that were coming through the middle. That's what I thought watching the game from where I sit, which is in the Ponty end. Um, we were all shouting Russell to go out wide, but as soon as he went out wide... Then they had two on one then against Craig because it took Phillips so long to get back, to get into to get into position, that there was that we were struggling and that was that was the main issue. And as soon as we changed that up and added another midfielder in there, then we had enough to counter what they were doing. But the thing is, last night the, we got done as well for balls over top and pace getting out back at wing backs, and they put one over Wigan and he just managed not to get a foot on it. Or we could have been two one down. Hmm. Got to be careful on all counts on all all our play and understand what other teams are, are thinking and doing. And we are we're weak. We're weak at that. You know, we've got to be stronger, stronger in those positions. So like that's it. Really every weak. formation's got a weakness, and every formation's got a counter to it. The thing is, you've just got to figure out what their weaknesses are before they figure out what yours are, because and then you just got to. And it's going to take a little bit of time, but. Some weaknesses are going to be more disastrous than others, you know. So it's it's all about Clark just getting on that training pitch and figuring out what needs to be, what what needs to be worked on now. If we see, if we see weakness, weaknesses, our coaching team will see them and be yeah, working. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. They reacted to it. They reacted to it together. Yeah. Like I say, you can do mm. pre-season and, to... and everything, but it'll yeah. never be as much information as you'll get from a real match. So they've got a real match to work off now, which were the first one. And we were all impressed with the response after the yeah. first 25 minutes. And like I said, after that, we dominated that game. So that system... Happened. You've said it, Craig, it wouldn't have happened last year. Last year yeah, we made exactly, changes, yeah. but it would change just to personnel and played in the same crab-like football, passing it about. I don't know if we were trying to bore people like Swansea used to. <laughs> or oh, what the hell? Sorry, Swansea. Or oh, wherever. I don't want to start that that argument again. No, let's leave that one there. <laughs> so, so I do think we've. I, I do think the the signs are better. But, but I am excited remember, for games as well now. Yeah, remember Before I was twenty minutes a season, <laughs> and we should have been on it. We can't afford to try and feel our way. Into, Mansfield didn't feel them feel their way into a in, into the first game of the season. They were away from home, and they went for it. They didn't feel their way into it, and it felt like we were feeling our way into it. And, mm. I don't know why we did. Didn't well, well, we well. I, I, I sent I think... you my prediction before game. I, I said a one-one draw. 
because everybody were like, oh, yeah, they're coming up from League Two, they're going to be easy to beat. No, they're going to come up with lots of confidence. They've come up with a seamless squad that they're left with. They've got the same manager. They're going to be hitting the ground running, and it's going to be that way for the first couple of months until everybody else catches up. We, you know, in, in similar, in like the team getting to know each other sort of thing and team cohesion and all that, because it is a thing. Um, it's But like I say, it's just, it's get, it's getting up to that levels, just getting up to them levels. And uh, obviously, it's just something we're going to have to work work, work towards. We'll, we'll get there against Lincoln, because Lincoln will be, Lincoln will get a bit giddy. They'll think, mm. you know, we won 5-1, we, we're going to hammer them, we just got to turn up. Oh, See, but they've had they loads of changes, so they're at a similar stage to us. Loads. This is what I'm but saying. We've actually what we're also talking is that Burton had loads of change. I think Burton lost many, many players. Yeah, that first they've time. had a bigger role this loads. season. He said he said that he think they thought they signed about twenty players. <clears throat> so everybody's had a big, a big turnover, and you know, in fairness, we've had a pretty decent turnover. Um, hopefully, we're strengthening it apart from the one spot, and if we mm. can strengthen that one spot, then we. Um, and go at them. We, we, you know, we could beat anybody. Whoever certainly they are, can. certainly can. Al prediction for Lincoln away. What are you going for? Well, I'm going for a first away win. We've not been good or technically in front of goal. Uh, we've created chances, so I think we'll put some away. So I'm going for a two-one Andy special. Oh, he's beat you to it, Andy. What's your prediction then? Well, it's not that. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's I it. Think, Pencil in. I think there's loads and loads of unknowns. Loads and loads of unknowns. So I'm going to go Barnsley to win 2 1. Mm. Actually, I'm lying. Don't get carried away. 1 all. My oh, predictions mm. 1 all. I can get on side of that. Craig? Um, I think a set piece is going <laughs> to is gonna be the, the key. I think we're going to win 1 0. Hmm. Low scoring, good defending as well. So far, mm. we to be fair, we've only had Lincoln down and scoring once. So I'm like I said, to... we've got a strong defense but a weak attack. So I think <laughs> kiss of death though after last year. Kiss of yeah. death. <laughs> It'll be another six 0 romping or yeah. something, isn't it? I'll go. I'll go. I'll go with you, Al. I think we'll win two one. I think we'll win two one. Gotta be careful. I was going, going to say two one, but I can't agree yeah. with everybody else. I have to be different, so I had to say one 0 it, it, it's it's the worry of the last five six minutes initial time because Lincoln and never say never, don't they? So that mm. that that's the worry. Uh, hopefully we can hold out if we're we're in front. Yeah, or they can, or they can hold out. Give over, wash your mouth out. The imps, no, the imps aren't going to beat the tykes. Ah, no, they're going to be holding on out. They're going to be holding on. Season. <laughs> they're so just going to be holding on at the end. I don't worry about. Added time or like that. They'll be they'll be hanging on, Al. We'll see. Just before we finish, I would like to say a massive thank you um to everyone that supports the show. Sponsors um who we've got in this season as well. Thank you for your contribution to the show. It helps us massively to keep the shows coming. It helps us improve the quality. Um and those of you who donate on a monthly basis as well, that also all goes towards the things that we can do and support the show um, and, again, support, support the community as well We're, um, outside of just the things in which we do there. So just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone there. Continue to support um, throughout the first part of this season because we don't say it enough, um, but we do massively appreciate everyone's contribution. If it's monetary, even if it's just people liking the show, sharing the show, commenting on it, either on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, getting involved in, in discussions, conversations, bringing stuff to us as well um, in terms of either ideas, putting back, backgrounds up, things like that. Um, what, we what's that done for that? Absolutely everything. Look, Rome weren't All built, microphones built day, that don't great. work. Well done, Tom. I'm expecting Lewis <laughs> Hamilton to come in. It just looks don't like worry. it's flag, but it's I've not got, black and got, white. You've got me Lewis Hamilton monster here, don't worry. We've got I'll tell you what, Al, I thought you were going to do a Bob Geldof and, say, and shark give us your money or something like that, but it yeah. hasn't. Yeah. So, yeah, massive... Well, please, massive. give us your money. <laughs> massive, massive thank you to all you who are supporting the show. We really, really do appreciate it. And hopefully, three points to the Reds. We can finally get some big some big points on the board this season and start kickstarting and moving forward. So, let's see, you Reds. <laughs>